I'll go into this in much more detail, but I can actually put markers in, markers are kind of placeholders on my timeline, and I'm gonna do this to the beat of the music, and then I can edit to the rhythm of the music very quickly with the markers. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. This is one of the coolest things. So I'm gonna go through and listen and hopefully stay a little bit on beat. Um, I'm gonna put a marker right here at the very beginning. The up and down arrow lets me jump between edit points. So if I wanna jump back and actually get to that exact point, I'm just using the up and down arrow on my keyboard. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hit the M key. It creates a marker in my timeline. That's because if a clip is selected, it would put it on the clip. I want it on the timeline, so nothing is selected. And then I'm gonna to listen to the music and basically tap the M key to the beat of the music, or maybe I'll skip a beat or two because I, want, uh, to, I don't want it to be so rhythmic uh, when I cut my shots. And as a matter of fact, let me get a running start here before. Print your work as photographers, and nobody does. And so we created- As a matter of fact, I'm gonna undo that. Because I don't wanna be distracted by the narration, I'm gonna go ahead and gonna mute Canada's voice for the moment. So now we just hear the music. So let's go ahead and do that again. Mark, mark, beat, skip a couple beat. Okay, so I put a bunch of markers and you noticed I, I kind of let it breathe a little bit because I do want a little visual diversity. And what I can do at this point is I can actually have gone in and found, like, uh, I'm gonna open up, and I could look through these clips, and what I'm gonna do is scroll to the top, I scroll it backwards, and it needs to refresh, there we go. So I find interesting parts, and I'm gonna just mark an endpoint what I think is interesting. Okay, I don't think that's interesting at all, I'm gonna delete that. Uh, so it doesn't confuse us. Yeah, then we have something coming up, mark another endpoint. I don't want that. Uh, normally I would put this in another folder if I had more than an hour. I wouldn't actually just, I'm not deleting the clip by the way. It just deletes the pointer. I can always go back and bring the clip in. Uh, but I want this to be visibly easy. Okay, that's good. I wanna wait till the camera settles. Put my playhead there. And what I'm doing is marking endpoints, not outpoints. We saw we mark, in, we've already used this one. Uh, I don't want to delete that one because it'll say you can't delete it, but let's just go with these randomly. I would go through it and mark a bunch of endpoints, but what I can do now is select a bunch of clips. I'm going to shrink these down so you can see a bunch, and I can, I'm going to just grab the first nine. I will now drag that, make sure the playhead's at the beginning, at my first marker. I can now grab that and there's a little thing here, and that's called automate to sequence. If I grab that and throw that onto this button, these are the nine clips, I'll get a pop-up. And it says, what do I wanna do with these nine clips? I wanna throw them on my timeline. I can throw them in the sort order. In other words, I could pre-sort these and like give them a number, one, two, three, four, five, great with photographs. And this is a great way to make a photo montage really fast. I'm gonna do it in the way I selected them, so if I didn't, have a sort order, I can go through and say, I like this picture, I like this one, this one, holding down uh, uh, the shift key or the command key uh, to make sure that they maintain their selection. And then I'm gonna say, place them on the timeline at my markers, okay? And then I'm gonna do what's called an overwrite edit. We do discuss overwrite and insert in the program, but we know, I know this is gonna be an overwrite. I don't wanna use, uh, I could use the in and out range, that would be, should take me to the markers, and then, I don't want to bring in the audio. Remember, I don't want the audio. Now, if I'm lucky and made all the right selections, when I hit OK, take a look at what happens to the timeline. Please work. There we go. All those clips are in. They're, all the cuts are right where the markers on, are on. So I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna hit play. Her, her voice is off at this moment. So we're cutting to the rhythm, and it's very quick. If I turn her voice back on, we hear the story. Everybody talks about print your work, print your work as photographers, and nobody does. And so we created this community event so that people could, so they could come in and see their image come out on paper. Okay, so you see you cut it together very quick. This is very fun. And even if I didn't get quite the right frame, so there was a shot here where, this is kind of nice, it pulls focus, but the truth is, 
for a two second shot, I don't need to pull focus. It should be focused and let the brain adjust it. So one of the things we'll learn is something called a slip edit. And that allows me to change what part of the image we're looking at. Uh, the, uh, there's a button here, the keyboard shortcut is Y, uh, for a slip edit. And it lets me look at a different part of the image. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And when I click on that, you can see in my upper right hand corner, I can actually change what the beginning and end point of that is. And I think the pan's nice. So look, here it's sharp. Maybe I want to pick up the pan a little bit more. And as soon as I let go, you'll notice that in the sequence, the position doesn't move, but the part of the clip that I'm viewing uh, has been adjusted as soon as I let go. And let's go ahead and hit play there. And, and see their image come out on paper, beautiful. OK, and if that wasn't quite right, because you know they pull folk, I could go back here, and I'm good and, to go. And see their image come out. So you can tweak that. Maybe I go, you know something, no matter what I do with this image, if I want it sharp, uh, it's not going to work because it's just too quick. So I like this picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of guide it to where it's sharp. And now I'm going to simply place my playhead over it. I'll right click on it. And when I right click on it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually make a freeze frame. I'm going to hold this and hit frame hold option. And we go into this throughout the course. I'm going to do it wherever the playhead is parked. I hit OK. And now, instead of having that camera move, in and see their image come out on paper, beautiful. I have a nice static shot. So this is just a taste of what you can do and how powerful it is. And, and we, we get as deep as we can. And even 20 hours is, is like, I, I could teach 100 hours, because that, it's that deep of a program. But within 20 hours, within 20 lessons, you'll have so much more of a comfort factor. Because folks yesterday were saying, you know, we're just scared of video. Well, hopefully, this has made it less scary. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I would export it. It's not quite done yet, but you get the idea. So let's pretend my show is done. I'll go ahead and I'll just fake it. I'll trim out the end. I'll add a little uh, fade out of the music. And now I'm ready to export this. I select my sequence. I'd watch it first, but we're not going to do that. I go File, Export, Media. Simple as that. And then I get a really confusing dialog box. Let's see if that popped up. There we go. And people are like, oh my gosh, I have so many choices. What do I do? <laughs> yeah, you do have a lot of choices. That's a good thing. You can export this for so many different uh, platforms. And look, phones, Android phones, iPhones. A lot of times, these are just redundant because it plays as well as an Android, as on a, you know, an iPhone, as whatnot. So you'll probably end up using a handful. Uh, I'm going to simply export it out as H.264 for the web. I'll match the, uh, everything about it. The, the source, 1920 by 1080. You can tweak this. We actually spent an entire lesson discussing export. I click Export. It now goes and creates my final video that's ready for me to send somebody or upload. It's as simple as that. Um, it does all the calculations in math. If I've added filters, if I've done special effects, if I have need to do something called rendering, some of you may be familiar with, it does all that. Uh, you used to have plenty of time to go get a sandwich and a coffee. Machines are pretty quick now. If it's a short show, you don't have that unless you lock the door and tell the producer it's going to take a while.